When you first come here, you're always in that stage of fear, not knowing what you're going from the elementary to the secondary school. Then after you do your school years, you gain friendships and everything else. And coming back now, you look and say, I thought it was so big, but look how small it is. It was very nice to be able to be back in here after five years of having it been closed. And uh, I was participating with the tours that we had of the school, and it was very, very good just to wander through and get some of the memories back. When I came in 1986, this school was bilingual. It offered courses in French and English. It was actually called a call secondaire, Penetanguishing Secondary School. The announcements were in English and French. The yearbook was published in English and French. The staff room was full of French and English being spoken. Uh, so it was a very unique situation. We would get a large percentage of the graduating class from the neighboring Catholic elementary school coming here. And it was simply because the parents had been students here and they were quite comfortable with sending their kids here and not shipping them off to Midland very big and important role in attracting families to this area during the time the school was open. We came from Toronto in the early 70s and we were very happy to be able to be part of the Penetanguishian Secondary School. Most of the people from the town for years went to that high school. I know it's been a few years that they haven't had it, but even just having the building there makes it still kind of feel like it's part of the town. It's going to be weird to have it gone. Some of the ones that come back to me is uh, Mr. Bayfield. He was a geography teacher. That was one of my favorite classes. Very much enjoyed my English classes. Mr. Jim Greenfield was a wonderful, wonderful teacher. Mr. Hartman was uh, sort of the most memorable one for me because uh, phys ed obviously was my favorite class, and so I had him always for Jim. When you teach phys ed, it's a unique situation in that you only have to take one phys ed course in order to graduate in Ontario. So basically, you were dealing with a group of students who had had chosen to be in that course. I had very few disciplinary problems. The kids wanted to be there. The worst thing I could say to someone if they were stepping out of line was, you go get changed, no more today. I love being a student with Mr. Hartman. He was such an awesome teacher. He was the volleyball coach and, you know, just coached phenomenal volleyball teams and they were top offset champions and it was awesome being a student with them so it was always good to stay on his good side because um, you didn't want to cross him. <laughs> you saw him see him upset and it wasn't a it wasn't a fun thing to see so but yeah he was a great teacher. I will admit that a lot of the students that I got along with well teaching them phys ed I probably would have been ready to wring their neck if I was teaching them math or English. We had a population in the late 70s of over 900 students, so we had three portables out the back to handle the overflow, and one of them was music. We had a very, very good music teacher, John Cool. It was a wonderful class, and we actually produced two records. So I played clarinet, and there was our senior band, junior band, and a dance band. So they participated and played throughout the years as well. But I enjoyed making the record, and I still have a copy of that. So I would say this floor here probably played a good part of my years of being my favorite part of the school. And then also the shop wing down on the, um, I would say the northern part of the school also played a part in my favorite parts too, because that were the shops and were things I enjoyed doing. When I think about high school, I think about the gym and that's basically where I lived. That was my home. I used to eat, <laughs> eat my lunch in the change room. Like I just lived in the gym basically. We were all thrown in together from three different communities, Penetanguishene, Perkinsville and LaFontaine. So we met a lot more friends and I still have some of those friendships from grade nine. The ones that are important to you, you hold on to the ones that are, yes, we were together for a good part of our schooling years. Sometimes they fall by the wayside, but I think the biggest thing is you come cross paths somewhere in life and everything else. Down the road, maybe you haven't seen somebody for 15 years all at once, bang, you see that individual out in the community and you talk to them and just uh, remember the old days. It's funny, living in a small town, Ontario, how often you run into ex-students. Most of the time I can come up with the first name for sure. The ones I'm in touch with more are the ones through coaching. Those connections are very strong. Met some of my best friends in high school, some that I'm still in touch with uh, a lot. We were talking to a few of them the other day, and we're, I don't know if I should say, I guess it's too late now, the cat's out of the bag, but uh, we, used to, <laughs> we used to sneak up and drink on the roof. <laughs> And uh, some of them were like, hey, we should go do that again for old time's sake, you know, again, it's just tearing it down shortly, so. What was happening in Simcoe County was there was huge growth in the south of Simcoe County. So they were having to produce more school classrooms and building schools in the south. However, the total population 
you had to take Northern Simcoe into account and we weren't growing. And so you had two schools that were under capacity and one of them was gonna have to be shut down in the eyes of the uh, school board. However, the review committee actually came out and said both schools should remain open. Then it went to a vote and the trustees said no. We're shutting one and it's going to be PSS. So back in November of 2015, the school put out a volunteer wish list for the committee that was going to be participating in the closing of the school and the 50th anniversary of the school. So we started meeting weekly from November to the end of May and we had different groups set up. So there was the group of students who were here in the 60s throughout to the 2015 and every group had its own room. So all the volunteers for each room had put together memories of that time that they were here. So in the 60s and the 70s, when we still had a local newspaper, all the papers were being collected and all the sports events and everything else were put up on collages for that specific room. So that was really, really well attended because everybody saw the pictures in the paper and all the memories of what had happened during their five years there and during that decade as well. So we had a lot of volunteers putting that together. When the school closed, it was a big uh, shock to the community now that we don't have a school in town. I don't know if that changed anybody's philosophies of should we live in penitentiary or should we live in Midland now because the high school's there. So the school did play a, a very big part of our community and the loss was uh, shown in the municipality when we lost our school. Uh, that school was a very, very huge part of my life. Just knowing that they're tearing it down was pretty, a little emotional. Just, you know, now that we're back living in Penetang and have kids here, I kind of saw my kids going to that school. So it was kind of, it's a lot of mixed emotions. A lot of great memories here in this gymnasium. I've had enough time to process the idea that PSS is gone. That part's sad. It was a very unique school. Things evolve. There's a brand new high school in Midland at the um, Georgian Bay Secondary, and the kids from Penetang are bussed over there. From what I hear from my colleagues that uh, moved there, the school's flourishing. It's doing very well. It's interesting now too being part of the fire department and we had done a bunch of training at the school and now as the school's about to be demolished we're going in there to start working on breaking down walls and all that so that even that's going to be interesting to be part of some of the demolition of the school just going to be some weird emotions for that as well it's neat to be able to have this school be so many different parts of my life wonderful staff that i taught with amazing group of teachers the administration over the years lucky to have such a great group of students the unique part being that the size of the school allowed so many of the staff and students to interact in things outside of the classroom. And I think that's what made PSS extremely uh, successful. And when you come back to a school after being away from the school for many years after graduating in 1989, coming back here now and my role in the municipality as a facilities manager just got put into my portfolio also to watch the school until we get ready to demolish the building and everything else. It's hard to believe that I was a student of the school and now I'm part of the demolition of a former school, getting ready for the future development, whatever it's gonna be. I think most people won't be able to say they get to do in life, attend as a student and now as a person working for a municipality, be part of the demolition process and possibly making the future plans of what this site is gonna be. So that would be my kind of final remarks. This is, I guess, the last few thoughts I could have on the school is just wanna thank the school and everybody in it. Uh, some of my most cherished memories and biggest parts of my life I equate to that school. Just leaving my mark and the school leaving its mark on me. The proper goodbye I couldn't even say to it, but it's, uh, it's never gonna be gone. It's always gonna be part of my heart.